We are a little over a week away from the Jackson State spring football game that will be nationally televised on ESPNU, I want to say. And I got five things that I am expecting or I'm looking forward to seeing at the real Jackson State spring game. Not the scrimmage. They had a really competitive scrimmage. But the real Jackson State spring game, five things that I'm looking forward to seeing. We're going to talk about them right after the bumper. Stay tuned. What's good, everybody? What is good, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel and Victor Formation. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because I upload every single day. Now, the JSU Spring Game is taking place on ESPNU in just about a week, and it's going to showcase a ton of things, I believe. Once again, I don't know. I don't have any inside information, but here's five things that I'm looking forward to to seeing at the JSU spring game that I think that you can expect to see at the JSU spring game. Once again, that'll be nationally televised. Now, if you haven't watched a spring game that's nationally televised, it's, it's different. You know, it's not a regular game. It's really a glorified practice, but JSU is coming into this 22 season with a ton of hype and rightfully so they won the swag East. They won the swag championship. They went down to celebration, Bowl. they got stomped in the celebration Bowl. I can never take that away from South Carolina state. They got, you know, they handed it to Jackson State, especially in that second half of the Celebration Bowl, a 31 to 10 victory down there in Atlanta. But here are the things that I think you can expect to see at the JSU Spring Game 2022. Number one, a ton, a ton, a ton of Travis Hunter and Kevin Coleman, specifically Travis. I think you're going to see a lot of Travis. Whenever you get a five star to choose an FCS program for the first time ever, whenever you get a five star in modern day, since rankings were you know recorded by rivals 24 seven ESPN, et cetera, et cetera, to choose an HBCU in the modern day, it is a big deal. And I can guarantee you they're going to feature a ton, a ton, a ton of Travis Hunter during that ESPN broadcast of the JSU spring game. Why? Because of the things I just told you. And if you haven't noticed on the JSU social medias, whether it's Coach Prime's Instagram, the JSU football Instagram, and all the stuff that Deion Sanders Jr. is doing for the team, I think he's like the new social media person. It's featuring a lot of Travis, and rightfully so, and a ton of Kevin Coleman. It actually might even have more Kevin Coleman than Travis, but it's featuring a lot of the two top-ranked recruits that they brought in during the 2021 cycle, right? The class of 22, they both enrolled early. They're both four and five stars. They are both are living up to those expectations as far as just from the practice footage that I've seen. Kevin Coleman is getting busy on the DBs. Travis Hunter's locking stuff up and playing some offense. It is going to feature a ton of them on the ESPN broadcast simply because one was the number one ranked player in high school. And then the other was a four star that was the first player to choose Jackson State on a nationally televised announcement at the All-American Bowl. So be sure just know that you're going to see a ton of Travis Hunter and Kevin Coleman. Number two that I'm looking forward to seeing is what does this new look offense? What is it going to look like? We know JSU struggled. Struggle to put points on the board throughout the entire 2021 season, right? They had the one good game against Alabama A&M, and then they struggled to score. Like, they, they struggled to they run the ball specifically. They really, even though Shador had some great stats, but if we watch the games, they didn't put up a lot of points on a lot of teams. They, they struggled. In the games that they lost, South Carolina State, one touchdown. The game against uh, ULM, only one touchdown. And then a bunch of other games that were really close, they weren't able to block anybody, they weren't able to run the ball, and so therefore they weren't able to put a bunch of points on the board. Shador still finished as a freshman of the year in the FCS. Shador still finished as one of the best players in the FCS, one of the best players in the country. But I am will, I am looking forward to what this new uh, Brett Bartoloni offense is going to look like. What is what is it going to do? What What is it going to implement? I know they're going to keep it very vanilla. It's a spring game. They're going to keep it vanilla. They're not going to show us everything. They're not going to show us all the five wides and all the trick plays and all the good stuff. But I do want to get a snippet. I want to I'm going to peek in. I'm going to peek behind the curtain a little bit and see what this offense looks like. What I do think we're going to see, this is just a prediction that I'm going to make. 
I think we're going to see a lot of points in the spring game. In, in, in a lot of spring games, we've seen uh, defensive struggles. Grambling spring game was a great example of that, Just, but not really a bunch of points. But I think with this game being on ESPN, with this game featuring Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, with this game featuring Shadur Sanders as the quarterback, I think we're going to see some deep balls, and I think we're going to see some points. Once again, I think they're going to keep their offense really, really vanilla. Like They're not going to show us all their packages and sets and all that stuff. But I think we're going to see some shots down the field. And I think we're going to see some points. This is just my prediction because they want to, one, get the country excited about Jackson State and their brand of football. And two, they want to show us, the, the returning people that watched a ton of Jackson State over the last couple of years, that they are going to score points this season. Something they struggled, like I said, with last year. I think they want to show that off. And if we're being honest, the strong suit that I think of Jackson State is going to be the defensive line. They're not going to rush the passer really heavy. Then there's no, you know, they're not going to tackle quarterbacks. And the secondary ain't that great. So the secondary got some help by going out and getting a guy like Travis Hunter, but has the secondary improved? And so I don't know if I find that out too. But I think, you know, with the secondary not being that great already. And the fact that I think they're going to want to show you that they're going to, they can score some points. That is why I think there's going to be a few touchdowns scored. It might be some, some scoreboards lit up during this spring game. It's something you don't see in a lot of spring games. Number three that I'm looking forward to is who will be in attendance. We know that Jackson state games are known for celebrities being there. Gillian Wallow, Troy Aikman has showed up. Uh, we've seen Leon, the actor showing up to a game. We've seen a bunch of just bunch of oh, Rex Ryan has been, to Jackson State. Just a bunch of celebrities show up to Jatoriel Owens, Tyron Matthew, just a whole but Demario Davis from the Saints. Just a bunch of celeb celebs show up to Jackson State. They show up to JSU games. Who is going to be at the spring game? Who's going to be in attendance? I, I love to always see who's going to show up to their games. Coach Brown is a celebrity. He has celebrity friends. He was an NFL Hall of Famer. He has Hall of Fame friends. The Pivot Podcast showed up to Grambling. We know JSU's taking tabs. They're not going to let them outdo them. Who is going to show up to this JSU game? So that is another number three that I'm looking for. Number four, I'm looking at the running back room. Who is going to try it out there with the first team? Is it Peyton Pickett? Is it coming off an injury, Tyson Alexander? Is it somebody we haven't talked about? Somebody I haven't talked about? Somebody I don't even know about yet? Who is going to run out there with the running backs room? Because the running backs are something that I pointed out after the season that they needed to upgrade. They chose not to go transfer portal route. They chose to stick with their guys, the Picketts, Alexander coming off an injury, and um, – the 38 special, I can't think of his name. I don't know why is his name is this is Santee Marshall. Santee Marshall coming, uh, you know, coming back, and they are going to trot somebody out there. So I'm interested to see what the running backs are going to look like. Going once again, I don't, I don't expect a whole bunch of like live tackling, a whole bunch of you know blocking and pulling, and a bunch of scheme. Uh, I don't, I don't see, think they're going to keep their offense very vanilla. But Santee Marshall, Tyson Alexander, Peyton Pickett, who's going to trot out there for the running back room? I'm interested to see that in number four. Uh, um, that was number four. And number five, what does the offensive line look like? We've talked about the struggles, the struggles, the struggles the O-line had in 2021. That is well documented. Everybody's talked about it. Coach Prime has talked about it, and they've went out there and gotten some big boys. They have gotten a ton of new big boys from Zach Bro to Evan Henry, Simi Moala, and a bunch of guys I ain't even thinking about right now. They went out and upgraded that O-line. Who's going to try it out there for the first team O-line? Now, we won't get to see the O-line in its full capacity. One, because it's a spring game. I don't think they're going to be rushing. The, they ain't going to touch. They ain't going to lay it. Listen to me when I tell you. They're not even going to breathe on Shador. <laughs> Nobody's going to get close to Shador. They're not going to breathe on that man. So, therefore, we won't see a full pass rush. We won't see. And that's what I think is going to be the strength of JSU this year. The receiving core and their front seven as far as uh, D-line and linebackers, that's going to be their strength. So we're not going to see that in full capacity simply because they're not going to, you know, they're not going to take any chances on getting QB1 anything, like nothing but, you know, green grass in front of him and, and open receivers, I think. So, but that new offense line, I just want to see what it looks like. I want to see if they have a mean streak, if they're getting rough with some of those D-linemen. What is that going to look like? We've already seen them fighting in practice. I mean, they put that out there themselves. The fighting is taking place. So I want to see that new look offensive line. I won't get to see it in its full capacity, like I said, because it is a spring game. But what is that new look offensive line? Does it look bigger? Does it look tougher? Does it look faster? Does it look improved over the product they put out last year, which wasn't a good one? 
those are the five things, tra- the five things I think you can expect to see at the JSU spring game and what I want to see at the JSU spring game. So it was kind of like a mix of both five things. Travis and Kevin will be featured a ton, I believe. What does the new look offense look like? Who will be in attendance as far as celebrities or former football players, Hall of Famers, whatever? What does the running backs look like in the running back room and the improved O-line? Those are the five things that I can't wait to see at the JSU spring game. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Once again, my name is Jeff Lights Jr. with the Black Boss Channel and Victor Information. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and shoot me DMs, shoot me messages. I respond to all of them at JLighty7. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out, and I will see you next time. Peace.